turn it over to Aaron, and we can go ahead and get started. Okay, hello everyone. I am I am Aaron up here in Fairbanks, and uh, here we go. So I'm going to do this uh, as very much as a how-to sort of um, video so that it is most helpful for those of you clicking on this as a recording, just wanting to know how this works. And then at the end, we can discuss and answer questions about various problems or specific issues. Um, okay, so just beginning here, I'll go over publications, how I add publications and citations, and then next those the next step up will be projects and projects. I'll demonstrate how to uh, add loans, accessions, and publications to projects to create a, uh, a very simple and coherent overview of whatever specific project you want to create. So here we are at the Arctos search page. You found a publication you'd like to add um, I use Google Scholar alerts and I recommend that you set up an alert for your museum so that Google emails you whenever your museum's name shows up in a publication. Researchers, as you all know, fail to notify you when they publish things. Um, so Google can, can do that for them. So I have this publication here first. To get to the Add Publications page in the search menu, click Publications and Projects. The first step after you've found the publication you want to add is to make sure it already it, it isn't already in Arctos. Publications are shared across Arctos. When I add a publication, uh, you don't need to add it again. You'll have to add citations if your specimens appear in the same uh, publication as mine. So the easiest way to do that is just search for part of the uh, title or one of the author's names. I will copy part of the title, insert it here, and search for that. And it's not there yet. So I am going to Create report data. Is that what I click? It used to say create new publication. Maybe that's here. Okay. I'm going to go back to the publications page and do a new publication. And here we are at the new publications page. Now, the Arctos makes this very simple. Almost, well, every journal article now will have a DOI and I'll go to my article here and find the DOI um, select only the relevant bit there paste it in here hit the cross ref button and it will find the citation or the uh, the publications data for me. So you don't have to fill this in. It does it all for you. Um, it is a journal article. It is peer reviewed, published here. That's all in there. And then the authors are not added automatically because they must be drawn from the agent table. But you can, if they are already listed as agents, it's very easy to uh, add them right here. Um, as authors so that the publication shows up as being authored by them. And if you, they aren't an agent already in Arctos, of course, you have to go create them as an agent and then they will show up here. Um, so that is, that's all the relevant data I need right now. I don't need anything else. I will create publication. And there it is. At this point, I'll go to pub details and you can see it'll show up here on the side when you search for the authors or the title. 
and it shows uh, no citations here. So we citations are a separate step. And it also shows uh, no media. There would be media appearing down here if we had added media. So I used to add media. I clicked edit here under the publication and we'll get to the edit page. You can add whatever media you want. Um, I used to add a PDF of publications, but the DOI is now hot link out to the publication, so I no longer uh, add PDFs directly to Arctos. Um, but if there's supplemental information or some data table or whatever it is you want to add, of course, you can do it via media. Um, once, once this is created and now you want to add citations to link the specific specimen cited in the pub. So we go to here, manage citations and with the publication, if the specimens aren't listed in the text, there should be a table of specimens cited or an appendix. In this case, there is a supplemental data table here, and this this uh, publication cited many museum specimens from various museums, and here we are, those cited by uh, from our collection. This one has uh this many i don't know was that 10 nine dogs but also hundreds of wolves and when hundreds of specimens are cited like this i would do the bulk load uh procedure but it's always best to learn one by one and understand the fields required before you attempt to bulk load anything so the one by one process here is right here and we're going to add a citation first thing to do is choose the type these various types are defined you can read their definitions as usual there's a, a define button there um, mammals are very simple we don't do a lot of holotypes um, we don't do much of anything but voucher i call everything a voucher if it's cited in, a, in a, a paper. You can add the page number if the uh, specimens examined table appears in the, the text of the paper, add the page number or any remarks. Those aren't required. And then that's the citation type. So then we need to find the actual specimen that is being cited. And in this case, it's 101233. And I will add the GUID prefix, catalog number, and Arctos will find that specimen and tells you that that is what you're working with. That's all good. Now, down here, this box here allows you to create a new identification from this citation. So the my understanding is herbaria and insect collections often use publications to identify their specimens. Um, and so this was created on a request from uh, an insect collection so that a new identification would be created as you create this citation. I don't ever need to use that, but these fields are here and they are filled in for you already. Um, if you want to create identification with the citation, click this button, create citation and identification. I don't want to edit the identification of this dog, so I'm just going to create the citation with the existing identification.
on Arctos. Okay, there we go. It saved it and it it returns you to the add citation page so you can do the next one and it has a table at the bottom now uh, with existing citations. So we successfully added that one citation. And that is that. And I could go through and add each of these specimens one by one. It wouldn't really take that long. It's just a couple of clicks for each or you know, turn this table over to a student and it'll be done while you drink your coffee. So um, that's the one by one process. And again, always go through one by one process before attempting to bulk load. And I will just click on this specimen. So we can now see after you've added a specimen to a publication, you'll see it shows up in the specimen record. Right underneath the identification, there's now a citation for this dog specimen. And you can click on the publication to get to the publication details or go directly to the uh, journal article. So that's the adding citation process one by one. And of course, as collection managers, we don't uh, interact with specimen records on an individual level. But if you're doing this diligently, and I do this once every three months, I try to catch up on publications. And it's, if you have it as a regular chore, you can then, of course, use citations to quantify any number of things and that's of course the power of Arctos so we can now search for things that are cited in any any number of query queries complicated or simple um, on the search page way down here in the usage box, there is this basis of citation field. So you can now search for any citation and come up with a search result that includes only those specimens that are cited. And this is what I do for preparing grant proposals. You can now quantify the amount of science that has been done on your collection. And I often look back the past 10 years and say X number of specimens have been cited in peer reviewed publications. And this is this is the, the new knowledge coming out of our collection. And those numbers can get fairly impressive if you're you're doing this regularly. Of course, we only know what we know. And if you aren't discovering publications that cite your specimens, then you aren't uh, tracking them as diligently as, as possible. And so you end up with what you end up with is the minimum number of specimens cited. And certainly there are um, more out there that you just haven't discovered and tracked in Arctos. Um, so the next step, let's see my notes here. Yep. Next, I'm going to jump to projects. So you've got citations and publications added regularly. You feel pretty good that your uh, well documented and you you want to track specific projects specific loans maybe grant proposals um, accessions or all things collected by the park service which is something i do um, all things collected by any other agency um, i'm going to show you one that i have prepared which is a project I use to track the outcome of a grant proposal or a grant award we received from the 
North Pacific Research Board. So when we receive grant funding for specific projects, I track the outcome of those grants uh, using a, a project. So I'll create a project titled the title of that grant proposal. And in this case, we propose to get 20,000 marine mammal specimens into Arctos that were sitting around here in boxes, um, unsorted, undigitized, et cetera. So that's the project here, rescuing 20,000 marine mammal specimens and their data from oblivion. So I searched for 20,000, got this result because I know that's in the title. And to look at what a project page looks like, I'll just click on the title here, and projects are publicly viewable. Public users can't edit them, of course, but you can send a link of, of a uh, project to anyone and they can access it at any time. And it's a, it's a, it's a product, it's a report. I use these to uh, report to the Park Service in particular. And they're very pleased with it sometimes. Others are not, but um, so this is what this project shows. Here's the, the project title. Of course, the description can be, this is the abstract of our proposal. And there is a table for entering funding amounts. And uh, Arctos will do various calculations and it, it says this project was funded for 99,000 and has supported projects funded for 2.1 million. And that's because it has uh, a, an NSF project studying walrus was awarded to the university here. And uh, that NSF project used specimens that were processed using this grant funding. So you can get some very powerful metrics here with very minimal effort if you're diligent about adding you know, dollar amounts and tracking um, grant proposals as projects. So you get various data, number of specimens contributed. We exceeded our 20,000 specimens uh, goal and essentially touched 23,194 specimens with this grant funding. And, and then through loans and other projects, this uh, project records the other projects that have used specimens linked to this project. So I can show that this grant award has contributed specimens that have been used by other researchers or other projects and I create a project for every loan. Most of these are loans. And those loans have produced nine publications citing 503 specimens. And I can keep on clicking and look at the specifics of these uh, loans and what they did with the specimens contributed by this grant award. So that's one, one way to use projects. I'm going to show one more um, that I use for the park service, and then I'll, I'll demonstrate how these are created. Um, so here's a project, Denali National Park and Preserved UAM Mammals. And this, the, the park service, the folks at Denali National Park are very happy with this. We've been working with them to clean all of this data up and make it something that they can use to track their specimens in Arctos without having to become super Arctos savvy. They can go to this page to find only the specimens that are linked to Denali National Park. And we have 3,190. Of course, this specimen link here will give you the specimen result of specimens used or contributed by this project. I mean, Arctos is a bit slow today, but it should produce a result. And this is something that folks not familiar with Arctos are really impressed by. You can you know, very quickly show them 
all the specimens that are relevant to them and they don't have to wade through the Arcto search page. Um, and then they can get to their data fairly quickly. And it helps to make sure when you, before you deliver a project to a user, clean it up. This used to show specimens outside of Denali and it was a bit of a mess, but um, I've cleaned it up and it looks really great. So let's say I want to create a new project. Um, the very simplest way, the mo most frequent way that I interact with projects is when I create a loan. I create a project for every loan. Um, and when you, well, let's go to an existing loan because once you create a loan, um, you have the option to um, add it to a project or create a project from this loan. So from edit an edit loan page, you can see over here, type project name or create a project from this loan. So as you're editing your loan, you can create a project right over here, click this box, and that project will be created as you save your loan. And so I've already done that for this loan. I have a project here. And by doing that, this, this project already records the loan data um, and it has the specimens linked via the project loan. And when I add publications to this project, they will then be linked to the loan. So through this project, I link the specimens used by the loan and the publications produced by the researcher. So here's, we gave the researcher these specimens recorded in this loan. They gave us the new knowledge produced in their science and the publication would appear here. And all of that would be visible from the project detail page. And it's not going to load, but it looks just like this. And if, if there were loans associated with this project, we would see them here. But we'll just wait for that and do go back to our main search page and start to create a new project. So I'm going to create an example project. Um, again, search publications projects. I'm going to create a new project and I'm going to create one based on specimens I have collected just as an example. A project can be anything you want to track. You're going to add loans, you're going to add accessions, you can add publications, you can add media or any number of those sorts of things. Um, so anything you want to track, let's call this Specimens collected by Aaron Gunderson. Um, starting, I'm going to start it on my birthday. And end date will be not listed because I'm still active. Description can be whatever you want, of course. Um, it says here minimum 100 characters to show up in a search. So you can have things not uh, have projects that won't come up in a in a search, which kind of keeps them hidden. If you don't add a description, I want this to come up in a search. So I need to add 100 characters here. So it Maybe that's 100. 
we shall see. So you enter the very simple data here, create project, and then you can begin to populate it. Okay, so here's the edit project page. You can now, here's this funded uh, field. Of course, there's start date, end date. If you have you know, calendar boundaries to add, the marks can of course be anything. You can add agent names um, and roles so that you can search for agents and come up with projects associated with people or entities. Um, and then down here, you add your loans, your accessions, your publications that you want to link together and become the project. I'm going to, because this is specimens collected, I'm going to find specimens collected by me. Let's see, uh, collection will be my collection, agent will be received from. me and let us see if that produces something there's some specimens i collected so i'm going to add these projects and it says here add accession to project it's arctos tells you what you're doing i'm going to click that add that accession and then some specimens will begin to populate my project And there's an accession listed as part of my project. I'm going to add another one. Um, I'm going to add one that has some publications. So let's add, see this one is in the project already, this accession. Um, let's add one that has a couple of different projects already. And I know these are published, so I'll add this one. And so I have that other project, so I've, I've or other accession. So I've added a couple of sessions, and of course you could populate with everything you need. Um, I'm going to save. Well, these are already added, but I hit save anyways. Um, and then if we go to the project detail page, we should see some new information. And it has specimens contributed. There's five specimens among those uh, accessions that I, I added. And you can see here, I didn't do anything, but these three publications by this group of researchers shows up as part of my project because they used specimens contributed by this project. So I collected a few marmots and these dentists came here and studied the dental pathology of marmots. Uh, I never intended for that to happen, of course, when I collected, but that's why we have collections. And I can see the downstream impacts of you know, this project or my collecting effort in this case to produce three publications um, just because, and, and that demonstrates, of course, the sort of broader impacts of your project, which can be far more impressive than a paper on dental pathology of marmots. But as you populate a project with accessions and loans, it gets to be very, very impressive at times. And of course, if you're creating a project for some large entity like the Park Service or the Department of Interior or the uh, National Marine Fisheries Service or some agency, things can get pretty impressive. I have 
Um, and I'll show you one more, and then I will be quiet. And uh, let's look up. one that has many, many thousands of specimens. That might not be in the title. So publication or projects like publications are shared, sort of. They're visible to all users. So if you're creating a project, make it a name. Uh, if you need it to be specific to your collection, which is why I add UAM mammals to the things that I want to track specific to uh, my collection. Um, so I have you know, various projects that I'm tracking only UAM mammal specimens through. Um, something like the Department of Fish and Game. That's too big. I'm going to click on the US Fish and Wildlife Service. Um, UAM mammal, so you could create, if you're creating one that you don't want, that you want to be specific to your collection, add your little collections epithet to it somehow so that you don't get confused about which park service project you are working on. Uh, and here you can see, and I just had a visit from the DOI Museum's director and showed her all of this and she was very impressed that we can track specific agencies' contributions to our collection. And then, you know, via the power of Arctos, I can track all the science coming out of those collections that the Department of Interior has no idea is happening. Uh, and they wish they could you know, track things like this, but we can do it for them. And you know, as we do lots of things for lots of other people, this is one more thing that demonstrates how amazing we are at collections management. So here you can see we've got 25,000 specimens from the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Service and that in itself is incredible. And of course the others, the outcome of lots and lots of specimen use over years and years and years is evident um, in this list of, of projects using specimens. Okay, so that, I think I will end with that. Um, I showed, yep, just about everything, adding accessions, adding loans. It, this is, it is a chore, but once you get used to doing this, you will be happy that you do. Add it to your to-do list for once a month or whatever to update projects, update uh, accessions and loans to projects, you know, do it however you want to do it, but make it a habit, and that's that's the best way to go. And I'll show you. I won't. One last thing. So as all of this populates your collection data, your these uh, statistics become incorporated into Arctos, of course, and the various statistics reports that Arctos produces will then indicate that you are um, maintaining your citations and publications uh, well. And I'm not going to click on these because it takes a long time for Arctos to populate these tables. But if you look up loan and citation stats, um, usage statistics is a particularly uh, uh, enlightening table that produces and shows which collections are producing the most citations and loans, et cetera. Of course, those data are only as good as their managers. So that is that. Let's. I have not been reading the chat box here, but um, maybe Emily, we could turn on people's mics, and uh, if there's any questions or any discussion, we could yield those now. Yeah, feel, feel free to chime in, anyone. Um, Deb's been asking uh, quite a few questions um, on sort of, let's see, let's summarize. Um, well, first, one question was just on um, IDs and, and basically um, how we use those in Arctos and, and the fact that they're sort of a many-to-one 
uh, relationship. So um, it, maybe if you could pull up our record to, to show that um, you know any specimen record can have a series of identifications. Um, yeah. Yes. So yeah. Go so, ahead. Yeah, I don't know if this, this specimen might only have one ID, but um, yeah, it does. We don't but, change uh, IDs on mammals much, but let me find. Let me just guess a random number here. <laughs> um, so identifications are tracked. Uh, you can delete them, but mostly they become unaccepted if you change an ID based on new data. Like I go look at the skull and I decide that uh, that isn't what Rodney Flynn says it was in the field. This, this one only has one ID also. Um, but this is the ID editing window here and I can add a new determination. Um, and there's various formulas for various taxa, mammals being very uh, simple. Let's say I look at this Martin and I decide it's an otter. Um, I can add the Lantra canadensis is the river otter. I can add that new name. Um, and Arctos is querying its taxon table for otters right now. And that should. That should pop up with an option of which otter I am choosing. Um, and then ID by is the person creating the identification, uh, which would be me. It's going to ask, I don't know, Arctos is slow today. It's going to ask which Aaron do I mean? And then the date that I've created that ID, the nature, the category of ID. So most things are field IDs um, or curatorial. That's when one of us decides. But then there are um, these other options. I think published referral might be one that's used when uh, citing the identification made by a publication author. So you can, can pick your ID type. And I think if you're looking for um, I'm reading your question here, Deb. You can query identifications by nature of ID. So if you're looking for IDs created by a person, you can definitely find all of the specimens identified by a person. You can find all of them identified via published referral or um, any, by, by any of these types. Any, any field you see in Arctos is queryable. Yeah, and I think one thing Deb had mentioned, which I think is a great idea, is um, you absolutely can uh, identify, you know, um, by person. So if I wanted to identify everything Aaron had, uh, if I wanted to query everything Aaron had identified, I can type in his name and, and run that query. But um, Deb had sort of envisioned um, a place where we compile um, which I think would, would probably be most appropriate on the taxon page, summary page, but basically um, compile all of the agents who've ever contributed identifications to a given taxon. Um, and in that way, like I could see for especially like insects or invertebrates, um, you could find expertise, right, for um, different species if, if you maybe have a batch of specimens that need identification. Um, and oh yeah, let's see. Deb's raising her hand, so she can go ahead and. I'll see. Loud. Is my mic working? Yep. yep. Is it working? Miracle. Um, <laughs> yes. So thank you for that. I I think my um, some of you have heard of Bloodhound. Yes. No. Maybe. Yes, this is what I'm talking about. 
Yes, I see. Aaron, that's you saying yes. Um, I think the idea is you guys are set in the way you've done this then to be able to really understand what it is Bloodhound's allowing. So while you're showing us a way in which Arctos supports tracking by project or tracking, um, it's another way to be able to show impact. It, it's one thing to say you have publications, but it's another thing to help somebody who's doing the work of collecting these objects and the work of identifying for others or themselves um, what that intellectual capital looks like. And as Emily, as you pointed out very astutely, then it becomes a reference resource when somebody says, I have this moth and I really need a moth expert. Where the heck are they? Um, it's, it's one thing to go to one place like you guys and say, who are the moth experts? But it's really nice via Bloodhound to be able to look at that sort of globally. But of course, Bloodhound is built on GBIF data, right? Published data. And he can, David Shorthouse can only do this because people are citing DOIs for data sets that David automatically knows those are specimen records. And then he can go look up people's names and he can assert who they are, and then people like you and me and everybody on this call goes in there and says, yes, that's who that I think that is. Um, so the cool thing here, I'm envisioning this scenario. I, I'll have a collector tell me, oh, God, don't, Deb, don't tell people where I'm at or what I'm an expert in because they don't want a bunch of people to find them. <laughs> they don't want to be buried in requests for identification. And I'm thinking the other way around. It would be cool if we could track this is how many somebody was able to ID, but also how many requests we had that we can't meet is because we have a huge demand, right? We want to show demand for the data and demand for the expertise. And so this would be another way to sort of showcase uh, demand. In, in addition to showcasing use of the publication, we can um, help the person who's doing this work get credit for it, not just for the publication. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. that makes sense. And oh. It, Bloodhound does that better, well, at least more clearly than Arctos, but Arctos has person's names linked to um, anything that they have done in Arctos or any data point that they have decided. They become the determiner for that data, and it is recorded in Arctos who is making the decisions um, about the identification for sure, but also the specimen measurements, the uh, edits of any yep. specimen records, and the collectors, preparators, they're all linked to names. And I've brought up my agent page here to show um, my impact um, that as, so as does it, determined uh, by Arctos, but this is not publicly accessible and not. It, it actually is, Aaron. Yep. Is it? Oh, okay. Yep. And it's, actually, it's, I will say, I will say that um, I think Arctos does a little bit better of a more finer resolution of a job than than Bloodhound, um, for instance. You, it really breaks down um, agent activity by um, into you know just into fine sort of resolution. I've edited this many things. I've added geo references. Oops, it's not on the, mm. um, it's, it's still loading here. But, um, and especially with identifications. So for instance, you know, myself as a collection manager, I'm often adding, you know, tax, taxonomic revisions, not because I'm an expert, but I'm just applying, you know, the newest name um, and, and then to names that have been synonymized. And, Bloodhound will pull those in as if I've identified them, which doesn't quite feel right um, since I'm sort of doing a cura curatorial task. Um, so this kind of breaks it out a little bit better or cl more clearly, I think. So I think that you you brought up several points there. One, I guess I would say you can see in the future if, if Aaron has an orchid mm -hmm. or if you have deceased collectors or identifiers that they get Wikidata IDs that this data can then be quantified and shared in a way that is what Bloodhound is doing is something we can't do because we, we can only do what David's doing because people don't have that data yet. They don't share their this information when they publish their data, right? So if, you're, if your name is in the identified by field, 
because that's where you mapped it to when you exported your data. So David's not making that decision. That's the way right. that data is in GBIF, right? Yeah. So if you're, I understand what you're saying. I understand what you're trying to make a distinction between an expert looking at that and you applying a rule in a publication that says this has been synonymized or split or lumped or whatever. Right. And yeah, I'm, and I'm trying. I'm trying to say that this is this is exactly what. David would like to have and have us be able to track the way he does in Bloodhound, but it takes people being able to share this data when they push it out the door. And for one of those things, we need collectors and identifiers and all those and preparators and all these people to have orchids, so we can give them credit for the work that they are doing. Exactly. And track it. Yep. That's and insane. and Arctos, uh, you can add orchid ID and um, wiki data to agents, so. Um, we can track that way. But yeah, that's a conversation we've been having um, on our GitHub is just how, um, you know, we have these modifiers to identify uh, to the identifier and determiner so that, you know, you know it's an expert versus a field ID versus a photograph. Um, but how does that really uh, get transported into the aggregators um, and to Bloodhound so that that kind of information isn't lost? But yeah, you can see Aaron. Yeah, and, and, and through not through only, all of his activity. Yeah, yeah so I say it's amazing. Yeah, cool. So, <laughs> not that. So, so one of the things we hear about measuring impact, right? Measuring is we talk about publications, but what we're trying to do in some groups at Tadway and others is give museums, collectors, downstream users, all the people in the museum, credit for the work that they do. And to do that, we need these identifiers for people. And you guys are at least well on their way in that you actually have a field in your database where you can put that ID and share it. And then you have, as you just said, at least a field where you can track what the what was the thing the person did with in relation to that object. What was the job? What was the role? Um, and I think we're going to see this going forward that people are going to find this very useful, as they've so far found with Bloodhound. So, GBIF is going to take Bloodhound and push it into GBIF and then add collection level information so you'd be able to sh search it from the collection level and do the kind you would think about. Then you would go and say, show me University of Alaska Museum of the North and all the collectors who ever collected anything for UAM and what families are they in and how many objects and then what papers are those objects cited in um, and who has identified specimens that are in the UAM, et cetera. So they're going to link all those pieces together. That's great. great. The same thing you've done Arctos. inside Arctos. Yes. Yeah. You've already done it inside Arctos, is what I'm saying, right? We, we can. The, the, as with any data, it's only as good as its manager. It's got to be entered somewhere first. And I know a lot can be mined from, even, from Arctos and GBIF, but ultimately it's got to be recorded by the individual doing the data entry. Uh, at some point in the chain of data, you know, collections management. So, and this is uh, j judging by the usage statistics in Arctos. Um, my my collection is maybe not the most cited, but it is up near the most cited. But that's because I keep track of citations. I think MSB does a really good job of tracking their citations as well, but uh, it's you have to take these metrics with a grain of salt because they're only what has been recorded, not necessarily what has been done. It first has to be discovered and documented. Any other folks have questions? Feel free to call them out or type in the chat. And one thing I wanted to echo that Aaron touched on is um, what one really cool thing about projects is um, because Arctos is this sort of cross-institutional uh, system, you can, you know, if you're doing research, uh, collaborative research with someone or, you know, you're on one of the IDIG Bio TCN groups, you can actually pool all of your specimens together in one project, um, even though they might be housed in different museums, um, and it's a really 
a really nice way to sort of bring everything into one place um, so that you can just see it all in aggregate and track, you know, any sort of resulting publications or media or whatnot generated by the project. Yes, and that has been something that I have been requested to do by the Park Service um, because they want a project like this, like you're looking at, um, not just from UAM though. They have, of course, specimens all over the country and they would love it if we could aggregate all of our Park Service specimens into a single project. Um, of course, that would require somebody to do all that. And I have yet to volunteer to reach out to all Arctos institutions and ask them to do something. Oh, that'd be very, very cool, though. <laughs> but it would be impressive. It would be, and something that, uh, again, would be another feather in the cap of Arctos if we could show uh, how we can track you know, national collections separated by thousands of miles of physical space, but aggregated. Under yeah, one and the service. Page, yeah. The service museums provide for those um, collections. All right, well, I don't see any questions coming up in the chat, but I will um, post the link to the, the quick IDIG bio survey. It takes one to two minutes to fill out, um, just uh, has some quick demographic questions and um, sort of about your experience with the webinar and also, uh, importantly, any topics that you'd like to see in the future. So we always glean those and um, try to package those for future webinars. So please uh, take a moment to fill that, that out. That'd be great. Um, and thank you to Aaron. This was awesome. Yep, thank you and, all for uh, attending. And we hope to see you next time. Thanks a lot. <laughs>